Welcome to Honey Express, an expression of the sweetness of God's word and a demonstration of its impact on the soul of a man. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn from God's word and grow in the knowledge of Christ. Hi guys, you're welcome back to Honey Express. It's Oyinkom behind the mic. If you don't know, now you know. You're welcome to YouTube, you're welcome to Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever it is you're listening to me and whenever it is. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today I have a very special episode for you because it's kickstarting the first series that we've ever, ever had on this podcast channel. Now, I'll give you a little bit of backstory as to why I've decided that we should go in the route of a series God has been teaching me a lot, even through the lives of other people. When people share their testimonies, when people, you know, explain what they've been through, victories they've experienced, places they failed or fallen, you know, I've just been absorbing it all. And I've been like, how can I take my relationship with God? How can I take my work with God up a notch? Because I believe that at some point, we should always be asking ourselves these questions. Because if your work with God is one whereby you're always comfortable, things are always easy for you, even in the way you live your life, you have to take a look at it because it's the same thing as going to the gym and you're on the treadmill. 30 minutes every single week, once a week, same intensity, same speed, and you've never for once thought, maybe I should go a bit faster. Maybe I should challenge myself a bit more because what God wants for us is that we continuously build ourselves up on our most holy faith. God wants us to continue, continue living a life that is pleasing unto him. God wants us to keep consecrating our lives. Now, the thing about consecration, and it's something that I would like to explain, what is consecration? Because many times, you know, we talk about Christian lingo, things that are considered languages with which Christians use, but may not necessarily understand. So concepts like grace, like faith, like mercy, you know, it's beyond just a definition. These concepts require deep study. But then for the purpose of this podcast episode, I'll just explain a bit about what consecration is and Bible verses regarding consecration. And then we'll go into our topic for today. So in the Christian belief, consecration is the action of declaring bread and wine to be or represent the body and blood of Christ. It's also the action of ordaining someone to a sacred office, typically that of a bishop. Another definition that's more general is consecration is the action of making or declaring something, typically a church, sacred. So that is what consecration is all about, if you were wondering. And We are called to consecrate ourselves. We are called to die daily to our flesh. Why? Because it enables us to live a pure life before God. It enables us to walk without having to stumble along the way. Of course, times will come whereby you fall into sin. But then when your life is consecrated to God, when you decide to put away certain things, certain activities, you know, that you used to engage in before you got saved, it enables your walk to be more straight than crooked and i'll explain why because it's it's a straighter path you know where you're going but then when you're involved in all these things when you're still moved by the pleasures you once you once when you're moved by the pleasures that you once enjoyed in the world you know it, it just it's a constant cycle of falling getting back up repenting feeling condemned starting the cycle all over again so consecration is very important to the Christian walk. In fact, there is no Christian walk without consecration. In fact, you're deceiving yourself if that's what you intend to do, because I don't know how that can ever be successful or how that can ever work. Because eventually, we are all meant to conform to the image of Christ physically here on earth. So if you're not consecrating yourself, there is no way you'll be on that path. I speak about consecration because it's literally the bedrock of this series. Inspiration versus instruction. It's important to be consecrated. It's important to want to challenge yourself to do more for God, to do more even with the life that he has given you because it's still a gift. Salvation is a gift. Everything we get to experience and enjoy is a gift from God. Therefore, I was asking myself, how can I consecrate myself more? How how can I make more 
sacrifices that will put my flesh under. Now, mind you, the psalmist would say, God does not look for sacrifices, but God wants a broken and contrite heart. The sacrifices that the psalmist was talking about was, you know, bulls and rams and cows and how people would do these things to shed blood in order to have atonement for their sins. But now we understand that Jesus has died for our sins. Amen. Amen. And because Jesus has died, he has shed his blood. Therefore, no more blood needs to be shed. He has paid the ultimate price. The sacrifices I was talking about when I was pondering upon how best to consecrate myself, to take my walk with God up a notch, was more like physical things. Things like desisting from listening to certain songs or watching certain movies or, you know, communing with certain individuals, not because they were bad for me, but because I wanted to be focused on God. I didn't want any outside influences, you know, taking my focus away from God. So these are things I was thinking about. And I found myself on a clubhouse room with some of my brothers and sisters in Christ, where we were all talking about fasting, fasting and fasting. I mean, hardcore dry fasting. You could take water as well, People define dry fasting differently. Some people have to take water. Some people go without water. So a man of God on the clubhouse room, he asked a question. He said, how many people have fasted for seven days dry fasting? Exactly. And then he shared his story with all humility about how he has fasted for 14 days and how God enabled him to go through that journey. And as I was hearing this, I was going like, this man is a human being like me. What does he have that I don't have? We have the same Holy Spirit. And so because of that, it kind of spurred me on to start thinking, okay, you know what? I'm going to do a seven day fast. I'll start with seven and I'll add another seven to it, making it 14 days. And then I began this fast. I was smiling. I was happy. I was chill. I was chill. By day four, by day four, I did not think I would survive. It made me ask myself a question. Did God instruct me to do this fast or was I just inspired to do it? And I'll ask you this question. Of all the activities that you partake in, how many things did God instruct you to partake in? And how many things were you just inspired or moved to partake in? Did you get literal verbal confirmation and approval from God before you took part in certain things, before you you found yourself in certain places, did you? It's not to make you feel condemned, but it's to ask you a question. Do you first go to God to ask him for actual approval with confirmation before you take part in many things? Or are you just inspired and with your goodwill, you just imagine I mean, this should be fine. The Bible says that there is a way that seems right. It seems. It doesn't seem like there's any harm. It seems right unto a man. Logically, a person would look at it and say, "Ah, this seems like a good idea, but it leads on to destruction. The way of the righteous is ordered by the Lord. The psalmist would say that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And we know that Jesus in John 1 is described as the word that was made flesh. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Therefore, I I would say Jesus is a lamp unto our feet because he's the way. He shows us the way. He's the truth and the life. So Jesus is a lamp unto our feet and he's a light unto our path. Jesus shows us the way we ought to go. So do we partner enough with the Holy Spirit? so that we can be led into all truth, which is Christ? Or do we just go based off of our intuition and say, seems right, so okay, what's the worst that could happen? If anything happens, I'll just pull out. You know, if anything happens, I'll just, you know, withdraw from this activity. But it's deeper than that. Therefore, Inspiration versus Instruction is a carefully formulated series that I've created for you. And it's going to focus on many, many different aspects of life, sometimes in ways you never really thought about it. 
I'm excited to share this with you because it also involves, you know, elements of consecration and the importance of consecration in order to truly hear the voice of God and truly hear what God is instructing you to do. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. Bye. Did you love what you heard on this episode? Well, the answer is simple. It would mean the world to me if you could head over to iTunes and leave this channel a review and feedback. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Honey Express with three S's. Spreading the word really is the best way to grow this channel and achieve even greater things. Thank you. Can't wait to have you back soon.